By almost any measure and stick you want to use, Syria has been the worst war that the world has seen in the 21st century. Uh, we have now probably 400, maybe 500,000 people killed in the fighting. We have about 12 million people, more than half of Syria's population, that is no longer living in their own homes. The refugee problem has spread not only to neighboring countries, but to Europe, and it's, it's become a hotly contested issue in the U.S. presidential campaign. And right now, with this heavy fighting in Aleppo, we're seeing some of the most intense battles that we've seen in Syria since the war began in 2011. 2011 is the important date to remember here, not just for Syria, but for the whole Middle East. That's when the region really blew up and we saw uprising after uprising in country after country. Syria's circumstances were very similar to the others. You had dictators that had been there for more than 40 years. Hafez Assad, the father, ruled for 30, and now his son Bashar Assad has been there for 16. And they're from the minority Alawite sect, not the majority Sunni Muslim sect. And these tensions and frustrations built up over a long time under this very authoritarian rule and exploded in 2011. And since then, we've seen five years of very heavy fighting. One of the extraordinary features of the Syrian war is the way that so many other players have been drawn into the conflict. On the Syrian government side, you have Russia and Iran very actively supporting the Syrians. Uh, in Russia's case, this is their only real strong ally in the Arab world. On the opposition side, you have the United States, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, all trying to play a role and in, in create a new Syria. And we haven't been hearing quite so much recently, but the Islamic State still controls much of the east of the country, the desert region there, including their headquarters in Raqqa. It's really been clear from the very beginning of the Syrian war that President Obama didn't want to get deeply involved. He wanted to get the U.S. out of Iraq, out of Afghanistan, and didn't want to go in in a big way elsewhere in the Middle East. Uh, he almost bombed in 2013 when Assad used chemical weapons against his own people. And then the U.S. did begin bombing in 2014 uh, to hit the Islamic State as it was getting much stronger. But then the Russians came in last year on the government side, creating new complications. Uh, and, and the U.S. has still been struggling to respond. And that's been pretty much the case throughout the five years of war. We've often heard that there's no military solution in Syria, that it's going to have to be uh, negotiated diplomatically. But what we are seeing at this moment is a major push by the Syrian government army with the help of Russia to try to capture Aleppo, the biggest city in the country, which would give the Syrians uh, pretty much control of all the major population centers. And the timing, I think, is not coincidental. It comes as one administ U.S. administration is about to leave and before another one has entered. So it's seen as a moment when there could be a big military push and a big gain by the Syrian government. And there's still no end in sight for the worst war we've seen so far in the 21st century.